Hey guys, this is Austin. The Lenovo IdeaPad 100S looks good on paper, but is a $150 laptop worth it? The unboxing experience is pretty straightforward. Crack open the box and you'll find the laptop itself, the power adapter, and a quick start guide. For such a cheap laptop, the design really isn't bad. It looks especially dope in bright red. While it's under an inch thin and made of plastic, it feels surprisingly well built. You've got a power port, full-size HDMI, headphone jack, and a micro SD card slot to expand the built-in storage. It's also got a pair of USB ports, although they are of the slower 2.0 variety. The real draw here is being able to run full Windows on such a cheap laptop. Performance is totally respectable. When you get into juggling more than a few apps, it can start to slow down, but for normal use, it's actually snappy. Since it's running Windows 10 out of the box, that means you've got features like Cortana and multiple desktop support, all of which work fine here. I've also got to give Lenovo props for not loading it with bloatware either. There are a couple apps pre-installed, all of which are easy enough to get rid of. It's powered by a quad-core Intel Atom processor, which is good enough for some light gaming as well. Minecraft Windows 10 Edition works, and while you won't want to try more hardcore games, it's usable for casual stuff. It's also passively cooled, which means there's no fan, and while it would be nice to have more than 2 gigs of memory, it's enough to handle a few tabs without slowing down. Having only 32 GB of storage is about what you'd expect on a low-end PC. It's reasonably quick, but you'll probably want to take advantage of that microSD card slot to cheaply get some more space. All of this put together means you can expect some impressive battery life, upwards of 6 to 7 hours, even with moderately heavy usage. The 100S should really be considered either a first computer or a secondary machine. While it's perfectly at home doing things like web browsing, it's not going to crush things like Photoshop and 4K video. One area where the budget price is more noticeable is in the screen. It's got an 11.6 inch 1366 x 768 display, and it's average in every way. It gets reasonably bright, but the color tends to be on the blue side, and the viewing angles leave a lot to be desired. You can adjust the screen all the way flat if you like though, to make sure you keep it in the sweet spot. Audio is also average. It has a pair of speakers on the bottom, which are a bit tinny, but totally usable. The webcam on the 100S exists. It's not exactly the best at anything, but for a quick Skype call or something, it's totally fine. Right, Matt? By far the biggest issue with the 100S is the trackpad. It's a decent size for an 11-inch laptop, but it completely lacks multi-touch, which makes scrolling a massive pain. You either have to tap to click or use the mushy buttons. It's usable, but it makes something as simple as scrolling on a web page way more annoying than it should be. Luckily, the keyboard is one area where Lenovo has things well sorted. It's nicely spaced with slightly curved keys, which feel really nice to type on. The slightly mushy action is the main giveaway that this isn't a far more expensive laptop, but it's really not bad. One spot where options like a Chromebook went out is Wi-Fi. The IdeaPad tops out with wireless in, compared to the much faster AC Wi-Fi. And Chromebooks are absolutely the biggest competition for this laptop. For about the same price, you're able to get a similar laptop that's running Google's Chrome OS. The main advantage is being able to run Windows app on the IdeaPad, but the basics are just as good, if not better, on Chrome OS. For $150 though, you're getting a laptop that's not only usable, but nicely designed with the exception of the trackpad, with solid battery life, and plenty of performance. What do you guys think about the IdeaPad? Let me know in the comments below, and I will catch you in the next one.